we're having a discussion today in the office about about worship and about um, you know what happens when we worship. And I was saying the Holy Spirit is not confused. It's not been confused. And one of the things that we need always to do is to capture a move of the Holy Spirit. Whenever the Holy Spirit is moving, always tell God to give you a sensitive spirit to track when the Holy Ghost is moving, to track when He's doing something. There are normally some divine moments in worship that are normally so powerful and they don't last for long. They may last for five minutes, they may last for a second, but very divine moments. And it's always good to track those moments because of the moments that God is pouring in, He's imparting, He's doing something very, very powerful. You know? And I want us to be to keep on praying that the Holy Spirit is able to help us to know those moments. Amen? God is good. And we're sharing in the office, you're saying that, you know, when you're at home and you're watching, uh, when you're watching TV and you feel like sleeping, what is the wise thing to do? See, Nikolala, you're watching TV, there is no crime. In fact, hello? Yes. You're in a board meeting, and you feel like sleeping, what do you do? Happen of saying in a quarter It depends what the meeting is, 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 is about. But I said when you are in worship, especially, I'll go even something else. Even when you're in worshiping by yourself, you're alone in the house, you're worshiping by yourself. At a time maybe sleep might come. You never know. Maybe the Lord wants you to fall asleep. Amen. Akwangeleshe. But at times can happen. But in corporate worship, God is not confused. God is good. In corporate worship, the move of God is normally very, very specific. In, in funny saying that the Lord is giving some people the spirit of joy. So in the spirit of joy, God is not confused. We can't be casting out devils and others are laughing. That is a demon that wants to confuse us. So we went to cast out that devil. God is good. But what was that? God is giving some people joy, so now others began to pretend that they want to laugh. You're trying to watch one, Yuma. Are we communicating? So I'm saying that at times there's always a move of God and it's good to grasp it. It's good to grasp it. First of all, to grasp it in your heart. I'll talk about that now. That's the first and primary place to grasp it. The, the, the physical way of grasping something is... Uh, yeah? Kuna echo. The physical way of grasping something is not the most important part. The most important part is the spiritual way that you grasp it. Amen? How you grasp it in your heart. So, so, so I'm not saying this that saying this that anyone should feel as though they need to do something different. I'm just saying that don't miss a moment. That's the moral of my story. Amen. Don't miss a moment. If the opening has come where you decree, need someone has to decree under your mask. But if I told you in the place with God where you can stand and you can decree loudly, then do it. The goodness of this class is we give you freedom to do that which you feel to do. Amen. So we're not, you know, but, 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 but don't fail to confess. You can still confess. God is good. Chiniyama? Chiniya mask. How about you a mask? Some things also you can declare if someone hears in the Kwaskando. God is good. Hello? Simna you? We're talking about what? Faith, fasting, and the fear of the Lord. Faith, fasting, and the fear of the Lord. We are going to journey through this through this month and see where we get to. Okay? We're going to journey with this and see where it gets to. Reduce mid. So, the first thing we look at here is, when I talked about fasting, some people already sent me this. Victor, you want to know about fasting? God is good. Nikakuja hapa, jake kani hana, akani ambu shapa inje. Kanambia sasa tufundishe yu mamba ya kufast. God is good. Amen? But the target I have here is the last part, which is the fear of the Lord. Because I told you last week, there are 42 benefits in scripture about the fear of the Lord. 42 benefits that are directly tied to the fear of the Lord. 42 benefits. God is good. And number one, I'm not going to cover them today. But there are 42 things tied to the fear of the Lord. 42 benefits. But let's go to Proverbs 9.10. That says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the genesis of all wisdom. Ebusom Olive. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I'll teach this in the next two weeks. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. God is good. Another verse says this. Another verse says that knowledge, knowledge is that which you'll seek. God is good. Okay? 
This is a part of the knowledge that you seek. But knowing God is where understanding comes in. Because if I have wisdom absent of understanding, I'm a bit confused. So that's how wisdom with understanding go together. God, according to the the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We talked about fear and said that fear is not Wogopa. But why I picked this scripture, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because Proverbs 4 7 tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Then also in this class we studied that wisdom is a person. You remember? Right? And wisdom is the firstborn of creation according to the book of Proverbs. We came to understand that wisdom actually is Jesus Christ. Yes. So we discover that wisdom is a person. So the fear of the Lord is where the relationship with Jesus begins. And wisdom is the principal thing. Christ is the principal thing. I say that wisdom is the firstborn of all creation. God is good. So, with that in mind, we have to go back a bit and ask ourselves if it is the principal thing and the, will and, the, and, and, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, then we have to go back and look for something else. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Not faith is impossible to please God. Those who come to God must come in that he, believing that he is. So the fear of the Lord that I know that is, is the beginning of wisdom. Nimongia speed. Tuweke mkono hapa please. Nisama leo nisuki ya kuomba hapa kidogo. Eka tu mkono hapa kidogo tu by mistake. Weka tu by mistake. Say Lord Jesus. Unlock my mind. I need to understand. I need to discern. I need to retain. What I will learn today. In Jesus name. Amen. Because I want you to walk with me because what I'll teach today, I have not taught in this class before. But I'd like us to go. It's foundational, but I'd like us to touch quite a different angle. Sour, sour. So the first things you have said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But you can't fear a Lord you don't know. Sour, sour. Now Hebrews 11, 6 says that without faith it's impossible to please God. Those who come to this God must come believing that he is. Therefore, this fear of the Lord, absent of faith, is null and void. Because you can't fear God you don't know. Hakim Nanipata. You can't fear God you don't know. You fear God who you know. So therefore, we understand that the fear of the Lord, without discussing about faith, we can talk about the fear of God. God is good. All the time. True Fasting. Oh, I'm introducing, please. Sawa. Mwana ni mangalio of fire. Higher. Fasting. On the other hand, biblically speaking, and this is something I'd like us to understand from today, I'm going to teach about fasting mushike. Biblically speaking, there is something called the principle of first mention. The principle of first mention is anything that is any principle mentioned in the Bible is always mentioned in the book of Genesis first. Every principle in the Bible is mentioned in Genesis first. If you don't find in Genesis, it doesn't fall on the category of principle of first mention. You can't talk about tithing, it's in the first it's in Genesis, right? Abraham tithes, okay? You talk about forgiveness of sins and the blood being used, you find Genesis chapter 3. Every principle you talk about blessing of children, curses, everything you want to talk about biblically, prayer, worship, Genesis chapter 4. Every principle that is in the Bible is found in the book of Genesis. The principle of first mention. But here is something that is very strange. It is that fasting is not mentioned or doesn't fall under the principle of first mention. The book of Genesis has no record of fasting. Good morning. While I'm for today fast, one as if you will. There's no record in Genesis about fasting. The first mention of fasting we get and it's an indirect mention is Moses in the book of Exodus. An indirect mention. The next mention you find of fasting as well is Elijah. Again, an indirect mention. Because the Bible says that the angel came to Elijah, gave him food and said, eat this food, you're going to go on a long journey for 40 days. God is good. I tend to assume if the, if the angel Lord gives me food, I believe that food can last me 40 days. So I really technically don't think that guy was hungry. God is good. 
God is good. Niulize tu malaika akakupea chakula. Hiyo chakula ni, ni hapa. Si iko na kitu. Yes. Na anajua kuna 40 days. Hello? So for today so there is no direct mention. The other time we come even to hear about Jesus fasting even the Bible says that he was led by the spirit into the desert. Amen. Throughout scripture and I want us to be very clear about what I'm going to say now. Throughout scripture even in the even in the, even in the letters of St Paul every single time we hear Paul does not mention fasting as an absolute biblical principle. In fact, he doesn't call upon you to fast. Sasa namanza kwa mess. Good morning. Tuko awakening minds eh? Sawa sawa. Yes, we do things with revelation. Paul doesn't even say Paul says pray without ceasing, greet each other with psalms, show each other love, forgive all those things are mentioned, but there's no part that says hey by the way for a funga 3 days, funga 21 days. So all these things you came up with, three days, 21 days, seven days, one day, whatever, all these things you came up with, strictly speaking, we just came up with them. I'm not saying don't fast. But I want you to do it with understanding. God is good. God is good. I love food, by the way. That you know by now. If you are new in the class, welcome. <laughs> okay? And I have fasted. Amen. So I'm not talking about something that I've not done. So I'm not discouraging you to fast. But there's, a, but there's this craze that people think that if I do it every time, if I do it every time, then it's going to work. And we're going to talk which one will work and which will not work. When Jesus talks about fasting in the book of Mark, when this man, when the disciples are trying to, I've said this before, they're trying to cast out a devil. And people have always preached this scripture wrong, saying that Jesus said that that kind of spirit only goes out through prayer and fasting. And they ignore the context. It's not the spirit he's talking about. It is the unbelief. Because they tell him, Lord, why, why didn't this spirit go? The disciples say, it, Jesus says, it's because of your unbelief. And he says, this kind goes only through fasting and prayer. This kind. He doesn't say this kind of demon. If a demon can't respond to the name of Jesus, how will it respond to you not eating? Good morning. Now what would you tell, sir, trying to break a... No. Hallelujah. Hey, wale munafunga funga ini God is good. I want us to understand that you may do it from instruction. But if I told you now, especially January, it gets a bit crazy. To me, in February. You know, January, ni garibia watu wengi, ni kawana wachana kuja to February. God is good. Yes. Someone asked me, Victor, can you do two concurrent fasts? It's in the attack of Daniel, na dry fast. That is better. How do you do two, two concurrent fasts? What, what, what exactly are you really doing? Good morning, everybody. How can you communicate? So we cannot start saying that this works. I told you here before. I told you about Daniel, the one who called the 21 day fast. I've repeated it here, and it's in the Bible. He's telling God, cover my children, offer the sacrifice because they might have sinned last night. Job is praying that here. Lucifer is in heaven before the Lord asking for Job's life. Job is praying paper two. Lucifer and Lucifer paper one. And we know it is a wrong prayer that Job is doing. He's busy in a religious act that he has been doing every morning after a party. Hakuliza Holy Spirit, by the way, Leo tuwambe nini. Holy Ghost tamuambia, by the way, Leo, Lucifer ametembea. And he's asking for you. And the same thing Christ does with Peter. He tells Peter, Uko hapo na niambia vitu za mingi, the devil has asked for you. But don't worry, I've prayed for you. When the devil asks to save you like wheat, you sit down a bit. Good morning. That helps you understand that there was something a bit wrong. I'm not criticizing Daniel. We're just moving to the realm of revelation. God is good. Because you and I have the Holy Ghost at our disposal. We need to have deeper understanding. Daniel never had the Holy Spirit. He did what he understood. You have the Holy Spirit. You can do it like Jesus. He was led by the Spirit. You see the difference? Now, Samuel, you know Samuel, eh? my good friend. First Samuel 15, 22 says that to obey is better than sacrifice. And strictly speaking, fasting is a sacrifice. Right? Strictly speaking, fasting is a, a must sacrifice. It, it's a sacrifice. Ata pola kiongelesha married couples anasemanga nini? 
Hmm? God is good. You know, if, if you're married now, fast for 21 days, you, sh you, sh you should be jailed. <laughs> and they keep thrown away. Good morning, married people. While I'm going 21 days, and the Lord said fast for 21 days. Paul alisema tafadhali please if you are married yes usi usi overfunga god is good hello i used to do 21 days before i got married when i got married ni kana ku reduce ni lunch na supper god is good <laughs> i'm joking though but i'm saying that we must understand that there are some things that go around paul was telling married couples that you can do this if at all you're married you can't fast for long because you might put your spouse into temptation. God is good. Are we communicating? I'm saying this to understand that fasting is a sacrifice. And there's biblical mention we talk about when we talk about it. Various mentions of people who took a sacrifice to let go of something for the sake of being with the Lord. God is good. But that, that is fasting at, at the end of the day. It's choosing to let go something that I love that I may spend time with God. That's what fasting is. God is good. Now, but to obey is better than sacrifice. Meaning obedience on my part is more critical than the fast I'm doing. In translation is that I might be, if I'm fasting and the Lord at that point hasn't called upon me to fast, there's a possibility that I'm doing monkey business. God is good. I once said that if I ever had a place where people come and pray and fast, I'd be stopping people at the gate and say, Mungu wali here. Apana, Rudy. Uliambiwa? Rudy nyumbani. God is good, but I got another idea. I can have a restaurant. Uliambiwa, huku ambiwa, uwe kulanga tu kiaomba. Uliambiwa, enda yosa idingine. Okay? To obey is better than sacrifice. How do I, but it talks about obedience, it means that God values my obedience more than he values my sacrifice. Obedience comes through an instruction. Right? An instruction comes through hearing a word. And we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. You understanding me? So if you take away, so if at all I'm running into a fast and I don't have the faith, then I'm wasting time. I have to have the faith first of all. Because that is what will please God. My ability to hear his word and do that which he wants me to do. That to the Lord is more vital than me missing meals for 40 days. Mnanipata. But it's a man I used to know. And I begin with the word used. This guy was diabetic. And he did a 40 day fast. And he said those 40 days he'll only be taking Holy Communion. And I asked him. I was still young in the faith. Nika muuliza. Hey, nika muuliza. Wanda he envied him. Nika muuliza. Hey, utakula communion pecha. I said 40 days. Until he diabetes ipone. Come on, be hey, sour. God is good. And I used to join him at time for, for, for nini prayers. I used to join him for prayers. I was, I was happy to see him. And see what he's doing. But me, I was not fasting with him. I used to join him for prayers. Every last time we'd meet and we'd pray. To get a bear net, warm, make a dog, and a pay story to end. And this guy kept on going small and small and small and small and i can't forget this on the 40th day on his way to church he collapsed god is good hence the word used to know oh you think this happy ending no and that oh he died oh he died okay on his way to church he died that day and that shocked me. I told God, Lord, this guy died and he was fasting. How does this make sense? This is the time we're supposed to be the holiest of holies. God didn't answer me for about six months. Six months later is when God answered me, when my mind was ready to process. It's when the Lord answered me. God is good. And the Lord told me this scripture, to obey is better than sacrifice. Without faith, it's impossible to please me. You might do something for God and you're doing it by yourself. Happy New Year. So therefore, what is our conclusion then today? Please conclude for me. If we can eat. God is good. You're talking about faith. 
fasting and fear of the Lord. And we can't address those two without addressing faith. Faith is the foundation of those two things. So we are going to talk about faith. Welcome everybody. God is good. So why is faith important? Number one, you know the definition of faith. What is faith? Having a good opinion of God. And to Kasema, use that statement translated from the, from, the, from the Greek. Put it everywhere. You'll find it makes so much sense. Without a good opinion of God, it's impossible to please him. A good opinion of God is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. God is good. So why is faith important? Number one, faith is important because it's by faith that you are saved. You take away faith from your life, there's no salvation. Ephesians 2.8 Faith is important. It's so important. Read all of it. says what? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So much enough. For by grace you have been saved through faith, mm -hmm. and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. God is good. You know, I was shocked when I learned that you can't lose your salvation. God is good. For by grace you have been saved through faith. You have not been saved by anything else. It's through faith. Meaning as long as you have faith, you are saved. God is good. So you cannot really lose this because it is a gift that God gave you for free without consulting you 2,020 years ago. So you can't lose it. You are given for free. It's you who can choose to walk away from it. That doesn't mean that it stops to, 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 to exist. God is good. Number two, faith is important because by faith you please God. By faith you please God. We know that from Hebrews 11, 6. Number three, by faith you receive from the Lord. By faith you receive from, from the Lord. Anything you want from God, you receive by faith. And number four, faith is important because by faith you walk. Your walk is by faith. God is good. To make any chapel, Sabas, Satwanze. I want to talk about three critical things about faith. We have to define to get in the deeper dimension. We have to find different types of. We have to find different types of. A few things like that. We go quickly. Number one, you don't pray to receive faith. That's a fact. You don't pray to receive faith. I'm talking to those who know my prayer and tell God, God, give me faith. Don't put up your hand. There's a video recording. And then people saying, at times I tell people, okay, what do you pray about? Pray that God gives me more faith. God is good. You do not pray for more faith. How iman. God is good. Because Romans 12, 3 says what? To every man the Lord has given a measure of faith. You already have it. God is good. So you don't pray to receive faith. You already have faith. In fact, the scripture that, that, that Paul says, all of us have the same faith. All of us receive the same faith. But the question I have is that, why is all of us are given the measure of faith? Why can Magi get something and I don't? 38 marks. Why? Uh huh. Believe is one answer, eh? In Guinea. Because you're going to look at that today and to and, and next week. Why is it that it is possible that Mimi and Dan to know Mbea Kitu? There's a group I used to know of ladies. There were four or five single ladies who used to gather together to pray for a husband. God is good. I personally don't think it is wise for a lady to pray for her husband. Ask me why. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. That is who finds a husband. So why are you praying for a husband? Pray to be a good thing. Don't pray to be found. You cannot be found. Pray to be a good thing first. Pray to be found. The go upside down. <laughs> pray to be found. Be my direct. 
No, let me be found. You can make me the good thing as we work. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to come by you, please. Hello? I don't believe that. I actually believe that it's the responsibility of a man to pray. But Lord, guide me to find a good thing. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and favor with the Lord. So it's my business to pray that Lord, let me find a good thing and favor with you. Now, if you are praying that Lord, what are you praying about? What exactly are you praying for? Exactly. What exactly are you praying for? There's no biblical reference of what you're praying for. You are getting your own reference. Lord, give me a man after your own heart. God is good. Nikauliza, who has the compass? Compass is going after God's own heart. Compass is God is good. You have got friends who married men from church. Who appeared in church for shopping. After they shopped, they disappeared from church. You have heard such stories. Jamal took a church, akakuja kasama huku ndo wako. God is good. Na akatokea church na kaanza kuja pale mbele akaanza kulia. Na akaanza kulia sana hapo mbele. Ukasema Jamal is very deep in worship. He worship till he cries. Kumbe analia vitu alifanya jana. Ama tuje na mlogika hivi bwana, unasema this is the guy. This is the one. A man after God's own heart. <laughs> Wacha ufikishe nyumbani. Bora gorilla na kungoja hapo. Wonder where this gorilla come from. Lord I prayed. Okay Lord I prayed. That is the problem you prayed. You shouldn't have. Good morning. You shouldn't have. Yes. Yako ni kukaa tu kwenye Yesu wako. Let Jesus bring the person to you. Your work is to be found. And I can tell you here for a fact and I believe this strongly. But if you are a lady and you are single and you believe God, I guarantee you, the man who is to marry you can find you under a tree. Aki atakupata. Zitamutuma tu. Bangi zitamutuma tu asubui. God is good. Atakuja kwa. If God says that, the guy, he will find you. Zitamusumbua tu kwa rote. Musumbua tu. Asike tu kwa traffic agonge gari yako nyuma. Zinamusumbua tu. Hata ya juu. Kuna musukumo wakiroho. Anagonga tu gari yako nyuma. By mistake. Kuna kamusukumo tu. Wakukupata na kupata tu. Anza kupata ushago. Wakati umenda ushago, mengangano kwa na makuku, na nini, umefunga kitamba kwa kichwa, nye jurikani ni kadagani, you are barefoot in the shamba, unatembea hivi, na jamana pita, amepotea. He was on his way to Kisumu, akajipata meru. God is good. Na hapo tu, na zinaingiana hapo. If that ata kupata, please yo maombi tuwache. Can we stop that prayer? Haki tuwache tu please. Wewe ngojia tu kupatikana. Mtu wa sikutanganya hapo, ati ujifanya nini, yenda ujiekele mahali, wacha kujiekelea. Ati tokelezea, si mama, enda mahali flani. Let me tell you, there is no specific point where I go to look for women. It's never been recorded. At your average single men pass here every day at 6.45. If you stand well enough, they will find you. There's nothing like that. <laughs> there is nothing like that. Please, eh? God is good. And I could put a over a mask. If you took up, I could put a mask even as I mean who you. This is the one. God is good. Hallelujah. Yes. If you listen to the show, I did family FM on Thursday. We were talking about that. We said that no man is slow. God is good. Miss Kess, ladies who are single. No man is slow. <laughs> Absence of speed means that he's not that interested. Mene cheka nicha. Ti umu anome mbaka aseidiwe. Anaseidiwe kufanya nini. Ti neona ni museidie. Why did you esteem yourself to be that important in his life? Haja kuambia you're that important. Who may assume you're that important? If I don't propose, he won't propose. He doesn't know what he wants. How do you know what he wants? That what he wants is you. You're going to commission a shikwe. God is good. Come for prayers after this class. That's a serious prayer item. Very serious, in fact. God is great. 
Yes, you don't pray for faith. That was the point. Eh? You don't pray for faith. <laughs> you already have faith. You never pray for faith. And whenever you are approaching the Lord, begin from the aspect that I already have faith. Amen? Number two, you increase your faith yourself. It is your work to increase your faith. Not God's. Now you see the difference here. Nikiombea kitu na magia ombe kitu. That is, is the difference. Who between the two of us has exercised and I teach about this? The practice of increasing your faith. You have to practice increasing your faith. And who among us has practiced more to increase their faith? That which they were given. That measure. To gain communication. Second Thessalonians 1.3 we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, mm -hmm. as it is fitting, mm -hmm. because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. The purpose of this scripture is just to show you it is a biblical fact that faith grows. That's the moral of that scripture. It's a biblical fact that faith does what? Faith grows. So it is you who determines how you grow your faith. It is you determines how to grow your faith. Amen. I went to pray for a man down this road here many years ago. And remember, we were going to pray for him. And praying for men is not easy. God is good. And then when you're going to pray for a man, and the wife has told you to go pray for the husband. God is good. In a kind of bit dicey. So we were young men. And we are going. We are younger men. We are still young men. We are younger men. God is good. <laughs> By your tongue, you confess unto life. God is good. So we were younger men. Yes. And so we had come. I remember we came to Kasimama Apoko Barbara. This is a friend of mine. We thought, what? This guy has been against our, our ministry all through. He's going for surgery. Will he, will he allow us in? You know, maybe he has accepted prayers. You know? And so we said, okay, try to pray. So I told my friend, do this. Eh? Let's call your wife. Let's let your wife join us. So he called his wife. So the wife came and joined us. So to Kakuja. We are still single. So Meshika, why I didn't call my wife? He was saying that I am born to quit a baby again. Jackie. So to Kaienda, we got there and we prayed. And I remember I was one preaching, and me I was preaching madness that you won't go for surgery. God will heal you. You don't go for surgery. You stay. Don't go for surgery. That was the sermon I had. And the more I try to tell him that, the more we didn't agree. When I do his veto, you know, doctors, you know, have done their research. You know this thing. You know this thing. You know this thing. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know Victor and Kieda, you know, they might go even and find other things. It'll be complicated. You know, you know, we are believing God. You don't have to go for surgery. God can heal you before you go. God can heal you. Now, I mean, I will be up for healing and faith and everything. Because I am charged up. I am ready to declare healing. But the fellow is on a different wavelength. This is in the way in the, in, in the house. I don't you look. So hey, watch and watch. If I knew what I know now, I would have approached him differently. But I was a younger, if, if I, I was a younger preacher in those days. And we know when we were younger, there are things you are, that you are not experienced yet. So there are things we did out of being naive. There are things we did we were just plainly ignorant. So me, I'm trying to push and I'm feeling, I'm getting angry. I'm thinking, this man, maniac is built up. to declare healing. Why is he recuperating? You know, and we are going this back and forth and I remove another scripture. I mentioned Lazarus coming from the grave and I say what happened when he came from the grave. All his organs came back alive and I'm declaring all this. I'm telling, you know, come on, Lazarus, I'll talk. A kapona liver, a kapona tumbo, a kapona nini. How much more your own liver? I said, hey, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know now, those were those days. I said, oh, this, is, this guy is difficult. And I went on with him back and forth about 40 minutes. And I was like, okay, now, let us stop. So now I got confused. So I told my, my friend, his wife was the one who was saying, well, you just need a worship song. I asked the Holy Spirit, so how do I pray for him? Do I just force this thing on him? Do I decree healing over you in the name of Jesus? Do I force this thing? So I'm, 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 I'm waiting to hear. And the Holy Spirit asks me, tells me, ask him what? He believes I'll do. You hear that? So I ask him, what do you think we can do? And I'm a victor. Me, I be, I, I, no, no people go for surgery and they don't come back. 
She may want to come out of surgery alive. Good morning. Ushe tolewa gear. Nikese mato yo maombe ni gaomba tu kwa simu. Didn't have to travel all the way from, from Rongai to Westlands. <laughs> Nikese kia very deflated. You know, I told him, okay, fine. I said, okay, fine, then, you know, let us pray. So I prayed for him. I said, Lord, we believe you'll go for surgery. I pray. He let the doctors do their work. Nini, to kanda kuombea doctors na nini. I was so disoriented. But that's what he wanted. So he prayed about that. So when I finished, he said, that's very dangerous to repeat at the end. He said, you know, I told him, so you're coming home. He said, I'll come, but I don't know. You know, they'll enter there and they might find something and I might stay in hospital longer. So I don't know. You know, these things just happen. You don't want to put a kit then. So it's, it's a minor surgery, but it can get complicated. But I believe God will come back home. You know, scare your theory. To cut a long story short, he went for surgery the next day, as he had believed. Went for surgery, the doctors opened. They tried to remove whatever they were able to remove on his liver. They discovered that it's a lot. They went deeper. The surgery was far much longer. They had to stop. They had to go another day, go in again, try deal with it. The doctors backed off, called the wife, said, Pali mifikia hiki tu, sisi at Westmeck. You take your husband home, ataishi na ipipe. You see, now the question I have for you is, was the problem God or the problem him? There was no problem, by the way. There was no problem. Amen? Because the reality is this, and you heard me saying this, the problem is not what God wants to give you. The problem is how much you're willing to receive. And at times, God will give you based on what which you have believed him for. It might not be what is best for you, but it is what you have believed for. So you cannot impose on someone what they're not believing God for. You cannot. You cannot. And so he did not, and through his life, maybe through hearing or whatever, he had not spent time to build his faith to that level where he'd believe God for that. I gave you a story of a lady I prayed for who had cancer, remember? And she, there was an issue of they remove her womb, and she believes God for a new womb, or she believes that the cancer will get healed, and she'll conceive. Like I said, Mami, you don't have faith for a new womb. To come a nini? Womb, mzai bakie, but nini to? Okay. And the Lord, of course, in healing the cancer, renews her womb. But that was where her faith was. Amen? And you normally forget that God will always work based on how your faith is. He'll always work within there. And at times it is our own capacity to receive that affects it. But here is where you begin to grow your faith. I'll give you very three simple things. Number one, always start from where you are. Don't start anywhere. Start from where you are. Start from where you are. That's the lesson I learned. Don't be creative. Start from where you are. If you're living in a house and you're paying rent 15000 God is good. Don't start believing God for rent of 150000 and you're not believing him for the fifteen. You're kidding on the bank unique. Are we communicating there? Because at times, it is not bad to prophesy and say, I know at some point I am I'm going to live in that house. But here's the fact. The faith I have at this point, there is no time that God will supply above what you believe him for. And don't confuse Ephesians 3.20, but he'll do above and beyond what you've thought or imagined. That is different. God is good. That is different. Because when I say I believe him, but he will do for me above and beyond what I've thought of or imagined, I have already conquered these things that I'm believing him for. I already know he's limitless. We are, we are together. Because the same power that works, that rose Christ from the dead. You see that dimension? The power that rose him, it lives in me. The power that raised him from the dead lives in me. And that is my truth at that point. To not communicate. But you see, it makes no sense if I'm sitting and I can't trust God for a pair of shoes. But I'm busy telling Dan to the Gucci to can move yato. Unlike a guna madness. I if I've not believed God for the shoe I have, if I can't believe God that God can supply a 3K shoe, 
And I'm trying to bypass believing him for a 3K shoe, but I want to believe him for a 30K shoe. And I'm assuming about his faith. Uh uh, you're only wishful thinking. Am I talking to someone? Are you understanding me? I'm not saying that don't believe God for party K for a shoe. But I'm saying if you doubt him for 3,000 for a shoe, you can't believe him for party K for a shoe. You are simply redirecting the fear of disappointment from your 3K to 30. Because if you miss the 30, it makes more sense. If I'm struggling to pay a house that is 16,000 and I can't pay a house for 16,000 and I'm struggling to pay a house for 16,000, I'll give you my own story. We are staying in, it's a practical story. We're living in a house for 16,000. Maybe you remember. And that 16K used to come the way it comes. And every single month was a battle of its own kind. Ukilipa leo, you breathe in, jumilipa 29th, you breathe in 30th, 31st, first. Mwanzo kimbizana tena. Haujalipa 28th, you've paid early, 28th is late. Sijatangulia landlord apana, nimehepa by the whisker. God is good. Umekalia deposit to the very end. Then the Lord moved. God is good. So, one time, in my madness, in my madness, I began believing God for a bigger house. In my mad, I say in my madness. I have not fully believed him to supply my 16K here. I have not fully believed that no matter what, come rain, come shine, he will give me the 16K I need here. I have not reached that place of believing him. But now, I am telling my wife, we need to move to a bigger house. So what do I do? I relocate the entire village. Hello? Now, if you want to know it was a disaster, watch and you say, Dear Mujusa, Zingine, Zingine, Shetani, Uku, set up. Mimi na wisdom yangu, nikaona, nikalikuwa na danganya agent. Ah, next week, nakulipa. Next week. But in my heart, I know, nahe, nahe pa. I have planned to run away. Now, if it is a move of God, why am I running? Stronger, Kweni. Why am I running away? But do you mean me, nime hepa? My wife was very pregnant with the Nisi. We are packing things in the lorry, packing things in the lorry, packing things in the lorry. Ni intaka ni hamiri the place in Guinea. It was a bit more expensive. Suddenly the agent appears. He had a BMW. Akai park kwa gate. Tap. So lorry ko hapa, BMW ko hapa. Akai nambia ulukona taroka. Kamambia hey, lakini ya asko na taroka. Nekwa nakuja kukona. Kanambia sawa. Fanya hivi. Sasa utalipa pesa kupaint nyumba. Na stima ulipe. Sawa. Ati? Ay, hakuna kitu kama hiyo bada. Ene, na, na paint. Ah, uh, uh, pana. Kama si hivyo, wacha kitu. Wacha fridge. Na fridge yangu ni pesa mingi sana. Mi si jali. Wacha fridge. Ho jamaa, I guarantee you, the two hours I spent arguing that man, if Jesus came at that point, I would not see heaven. <laughs> Nisi wadangani? Me na jua for a fact. Habo ni 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 backslide. Ni ni back. Yani if you don't have, I wanted to kill that man with my bare hands. Yani ni kasiri kana yani nataka ni mnamambi ni ni we. Yani sasa gino taka mtuka ni umuruki umpige ni ni. But reality ni moja tu. Yani me pack gari na jamasi tui gari yangu. No kweli o gari yitoki. Tu ka onge ya bara kambi asuto bele koko tini basi. Akse ma pa na hey basi yangu mna liba man. Akapeja simu kinyapoa. Nilikuwa na hepa na bilia kinyapoa ya 6K. Kanambia na bilia ya 6K. Kanambia Victor, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Ukuwa na kama mtu wa, mtu wa, mtu wa nini, wama watu hejima. Hasa nona imanza kwa papa suno. Tuna yama, tumanda kwenda pa halimbaya za asa imanza kwa papa suno. Eni hivyo, tuka siku mana, tuka siku mana, nika panda sukari, nika shuka. Nika panda, nika shuka. Nika mustua, nika jistua mwenyewe. Nika fanya kila kitu, nika maliza. I finished. At the end of the day, I had to yield. Nika mwambia, ok. Wacha ni kwache deep freezer yangu. Na microwave. Iyo inatosha. Kani angalia. Kani ambia, leta pesa ya stima kwanza. Nika mpea pesa ya stima. Kani ambia, kani ambia majama kuchukwenye deep freezer. Na hiyo microwave pelekeni yuko. Naka 
kufunga mlango akanambia ile siku utapata hiyo pesa mimi sitaki deep freezer yako by the way but siku utapata that day neighbors are on the balcony watching this man who was praying playing praise and worship loudly every day they are watching this criminal now i am a criminal running away wananiangalia hivi wala shanga huyo jamaa wa sanga hapa mama moshi papa anajifanya kuokoka he was having prayers in his house every friday suddenly is the guy running away yes anatoka na pesa ya watu he tulitoka hapo embarrassed ashamed yes my wife alikuwa anambia i feel violated and i look at my wife and i have nothing to say i have nothing to say You know at at someone una yakumwambia you know <laughs> And we moved to this place. We moved to this place. I told the story and we moved there and my father asked me could ask me one is there water? Is it safe? I don't know of course it is. Of course it is safe. Ushaisikia mtu amebiwa ronga hii wewe. Ushawaisikia. Ushawaisikia wewe. Of course kuna maji. Kwani? So there was thing I only had one padlock cuz I was staying on the third floor. I need one padlock. So I moved there and I need like two or three. Ya gate juu ya nini but I've only locked with one. I mean we are safe. So next day is when data begins to flow. I be see results another one by one. At by the the neighbor has told us that water comes twice a week. Twice a week. Thank you Gogo Junior how many nini? Yo uki flash cho mara ine majibisha. And it's a crazy house. Kuna mpaka bathtub. So you wonder what's the bathtub? Bathtub but it comes twice a week. I don't understand the logic of that bathtub. So suddenly now tunaangaliana. So the next day I go to town I come back in the evening and she tells him by the way, hey, the other neighbor has told us everyone here has been robbed. <laughs> They have been robbed. <laughs> everyone here has been robbed. Okay, Victor, hasa kama umana. Sina padlocks. Nikaanza nikafunga milango usiku na mawaya za hanga. Nikafunga na mawaya za hanga, nikafunga na mawaya za hanga na pliers. Nazungusha pliers, nazungusha pliers. Nachapa masking tape, masking tape, masking tape, masking tape, masking tape. Na eka masufuria kwa mlango. Mlango imehanga, unaweka sufuria kwa handle lugu ya mlango hivi. Jamaa kitana sufuria nke ni alarm ting. And I asked myself later on sufuria ingeanguka ningefanya you know i didn't think that far so usiku kulala ni ni action ni masufuria na kwa mlango vikombe kwa mlango ya sitting room nimefunga sijui nini na i'm no longer sleeping sina amani bottom line is there they came they robbed us bottom line is you plead you are one glorious night yes unaambia na neighbor una big neighbor anamwambia kuna watu nje anambia kuna watu nje kuna watu nje Damu <laughs> ikakauka. My blood ilikaukia hapo on the spot. Pap, we are finished. Hash is pregnant. We were so afraid staying there. We were so afraid. In fact, God is good. Because when we got robbed, the landlord came and said because we were robbed, we don't pay rent that month. We get back what we had lost. Truthfully speaking, I had no money for rent. So kind of to live back as at least. Ooh, go sawa. When my wife went into labor, me I told God, hold that child till morning. Sifungu hizi milango usiku. Sifungu hizi milango usiku. Huko mtoto anazaliwa asubuhi. Hakuna maneno mengi hapa. Na namuuliza tu zimefika how many minutes anaambia tu. Literally she tell you we got to hospital like this and she gave birth. Then ninge go just 5 minutes. I mean you going to kuzalisha mtoto. But you see when I'm to bungu shikilia mungu anajua hizi milango zifungui I'm not opening this doors I am not opening a door I had nightmares I could afford to pay rent I couldn't afford to pay rent in that house all the time I was there seeing gas alipa and the question is if I couldn't believe him for the 16 that he can supply that 16 what faith is of the heart In English we say faith is not feelings Imani kwa ngi mingi juu unasikia joto. Ama unasikia baridi. Ama unasikia umeanza kutingika. Haimaanishi imani ni mingi. Huh? Whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea 
and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says it says this no doubt in his heart there is no doubt in your mind no doubt in his heart faith is of the heart I want you to write something down very quickly God will still work in your life if you believe in your heart and doubt in your mind. God will still work in your life if you believe in your heart and you doubt with your mind. Because faith is of the heart. That's what God looks at. My heart has, has to have no shadow of doubt. My mind might question. My mind might ask a silly question. Like Sarah. I can giggle. Hi, Aje. How can it happen? That was Sarah's mind. God is good. But she's a member of faith because her heart believed. It is here that where we, we, we believe. Because faith is not a mental consent. Faith is not a mental consent. And faith is not hope. God is good. Let's read Psalm 103. That's why there are people who know Bible verses all over and they can declare Bible verses. Jeremiah 9.11, Philippians 4.19, but nothing, nothing, nothing. Sorry. None of those things come to pass because it is in here. Haiko Hapa. It's not here. So someone can declare, declare, declare scriptures and declare it. But Akuna, Kitu, Mbiti, Akuna. And that's the mistake I've seen many people doing. But they're making faith come to the mind and they're, and they're packing it here. But my mind, is, my mind has to understand it. My mind has to understand it. Your mind will always look for immediate contradiction. If you're believing God for something, your humanity will always go for contradiction. And you must be aware in your personal life, where are my areas of contradiction? What is the voice of contradiction? There's always a contradiction. There is nothing that God promises that doesn't have a direct human contradiction. Nothing. If God says he's going to heal you, immediate contradiction is how sick you are, what the doctor said, immediate contradiction. Now since it's an asana, that's what we listen to, the contradiction. Because your mind will always work hard to show you that it is not possible. How many of you ever believed God for something? Now, Kasema. And someone told you, Yo, Yezekani. God is good. I have believed God for something and I've said, I'm believing God for this. I want to buy myself a very good car. God is good. Yo, so I could reach a zero. Zero, zero, zero. You are believing. You are not reversing. You are not I want to do this. Will you be able to? That it comes to a place where in life you learn how to guard the things of faith. You learn to guard them. Because you know that if I speak this, no one will believe. It's a crazy thing. God is good. But I've said that faith is not feelings. See, we are not scared. feel. If you believe in your heart, you have to have no doubt in your heart that Jesus will do it. That's what happens when we worship. I've always said we worship a God we know. But I have no doubt. But Lord, your word is yes and amen. And I have no doubt. And because I have no doubt, that stirs up my spirit. That stirs up my spirit. I'm believing you for more. God is good. God is good. When your mind is the one working, you'll use statements like this. I believed God for this thing. I don't know why I didn't get it. I believed God for this. Why did it take too long? Why did it happen? It means that was not faith. It was mental consent. You agreed with your mind, not with your heart. Kama unaishi kwa hope. said faith is not hope. If Liz is unwell now, and I pray for Liz now, I tell Liz, receive the healing of the Lord right now. Liz, and a choice. 
Liza ananiambia Victor I believe that God will heal me. Hiyo ni hope. You see faith. Faith is present tense. Faith is your future. Anything you believe in the future ni hope. Faith in I receive now. I receive now. And that is why when we worship I'm always very keen that if the Lord is moving to let you know at some point I want to be saying because we'll have grown to that level. There might be no members who don't know. God, God is good. But why you talk about it? It's because to let you know that it is now. We are not asking for a miracle tomorrow. It is now. It is now. And I remember the lady I was praying for very, very many years ago. I think 20... This lady came to me three times. She had diabetes, very serious diabetes, and she was shaking. She was actually shaking, I remember. And I was on the pulpit preaching, and I'd see her every day. So every time I'd do an altar call, she'd come to the front. Then I'd pray for her, and I'd tell her, the Lord has healed you. The Lord has healed you. And she'd say, Amen, the Lord has healed me. The Lord, I, I know he's going to heal me, Victor. I believe he's going to heal me. I believe he's going to heal me. Then she goes back and sits. Then the next day we are worshiping again, same thing happens. I do an altar call, she comes again. To the front I, I again I, I pray for her and I tell her God has healed you and she tells me I believe that he I believe that he's going to heal me I believe he's, he's, he's going to heal me she went again and sat down this is on Tuesday Wednesday again at about lunch time I'm doing the ministry before lunch and I'm doing ministry again I do an altar call again you know the numbers are reducing eh because people are getting healed they are not coming back she came back again hey okay Okay, receive your at this time I didn't even I didn't register. You receive your healing in Jesus' name. Mungu amekuponya. Enda ukai chini. Akatembea step mbili akarudi. Akanambia Victor, lakini bado nasikia hiyo uchungu. Bado nasikia ni hiyo uchungu. So quickly my instinct was higher. Tuweke microphone chini tuataki kitu. So nikaenda kaweka microphone chini nikafikiria hapa nikamwambia no. God told me he has healed you. No, go sit down. So she turned and went. She looked very dejected. So the next day, I didn't do an altar call because I didn't want her to come. I didn't want her to come. So then I did an altar call. So now the Friday now, we are doing ministry in this hall. It's a big hall about, I think, 500 to 1,000 people. It was called Mashambani. And you are to leave the hall and you are to go to a crusade at the market. So I'm the one ministering now. So I'm ministering, I'm ministering now at the stage and the people are coming on the stage. So now others now have cropped in now what last minute. But those who are now walking in the hell as you know, Mr. Minister, they are coming. Those of you are, you know, the many testimonies I gave from that day. So this lady came and she had a problem with her eyes. We prayed for her. God restored her eyes. Then when I'm about to finish, the lady appeared. Can I be a victor? Bad on a skia, ele uchungu nilikuwa na skia. Nikasema, okay, stream power. At that point, even me, I know anything is possible. So I've seen a lady who was blindly seeing. I've seen another lady doing it. God has done things. So she comes and I want to lay hands on her. And the Holy Ghost tells me, I told you I healed her. So I backed off. I told her, the Lord said he healed you. Then she looked at me. But I'm going to ask you. 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 Listen to that. Wakati ugonjwa itaenda. Nikamuambia unafa kuamini ugonjwa imeenda. If you are waiting for the disease to go for you to believe, then you are doing something I don't understand. Now some of us, the Lord will say, I have taken you out of debt. But you are waiting for the debt to go for you to believe you are out of debt. The Lord has said he'll give you a job. You're waiting to see the job to believe. You are doing reverse currency. You are doing reverse currency. You are saying, let me serve my guests with food first. Then I will know how much food I need to buy. You see how that is crazy? You are going in reverse. 
Yet the truth is that first of all, I need to believe. Not that you have to believe first that it has happened. Faith is now. This thing will not get any hope. Now hope doesn't disappoint. But you are here now. So you have to believe that you, that, you, that you have to believe God now. It has happened now. And that is why at times, and I'll give a, a very interesting testimony. There are those of you who hear the test, the prophets they gave on the on the fourth. You grabbed them here before they happened. And you've been coming to me with testimonies. You've been telling me, Victor, no, I've, this, I've seen this happening. I've seen this happening. You said this, I've seen this happening. Had you touched it? No. But you believed that day. That's a mistake we do. We want that God, when you take me, when you take me there, then I'll believe you. If God has said I've given you a car, God has given you a car. Believe God has given you a car. Stay at the place God has given you a car. But you're waiting to touch the car, then you say, now Lord, I believe. That is reverse. You're in Uganda. God is good. You look like you're deep in the spirit. Are we communicating? Yeah. I have to have the belief in me that I am going to, that I have received. I'm not going to, I have received. And there are many breakthroughs in your life will come because you have believed and you have received and you have worked with it. I can't start telling Jesus, Lord, I am believing you that you will give me then when I get the car. No. God told me on the mountain, I have released your car. I believed that day that I'll get a car. I called and said, God has said I thank him for the car. End of story. Do I know where it was going to come from? No. My mind doubted. Because my mind understood my finances. But my heart knew. But my God never lies. And that is the basis of all this. Does God lie to you? Because if you worship a God who lies to you, then there's a problem. God doesn't lie. So even when you worship and I say that we are worshiping a God we know, a God we have seen, you are believing him. The bad thing you've come here with today, you are believing he has done it. How Jaishika, it is the, they say faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not yet seen. Not yet seen. I can't wait to see the healing, then I believe it. No. Yes, I'm going to be able to stretch forth your withered hand. He did not tell them at any single point, but let the hand get well, then you stretch it. It was stretched forth your withered hand. It was a withered hand, but the process, it is getting better. It is done now. I believe I'm healed now. Amen? God is good. And I want us to believe God for that because some things that are stuck are there. Me, I know God never lies. And you can't tell me God lies. And at times I get confused because I know God never lies. He has never lied before. I've not seen God telling me something and he has failed to do it. All this time I've done ministry, God has never told me he will do something and he will fail. Never. That's why women come here, I say, to flani, me I stand on that word. We panda you shook me I stand on that word. God is good. If you are said me, I'll stand there and I'll wait. God is great. Martha, I go up alone. Okay. What an event testimony again. I went to pray for Martha's house last year, November. The house was incomplete. When I went to pray for a house, it was incomplete. When I was there, the Lord told me a word, and I told her and the husband. But before Christmas, they'll be in that house. The Lord will supply their, the money they need to finish the house and they'll be in that house. She knew for a fact that I was crazy. God is good. He craziness never receive it. And I mean, I left. I went. Towards, I think, the beginning of the year. I don't know what happened in between. I was not here. But at the beginning of the year, I was looking for the number of her cardiologist. So I called, I called her to ask her for the cardiologist. Then the husband called me. So you're chatting with the husband. The husband told me, Victor, what the Lord said has happened. We moved in. We had Christmas in this house. These are witnesses. You know witnesses? We were there to give thanks. The husband told me, I said I don't know where money was coming from. Which I did not know where money was coming from. There are places he had thought money would come from. It didn't come from there. Lord, the Lord provided money from his own source. Me, I knew God was not lying. That was my conviction. God was not lying. So do you think that God is lying? When God gives you a word, be sure as the sun rises in the morning, everything around you will try to contradict that word. But so God says he's taking you out of debt. Tomorrow morning, you'll receive a call from someone to owe money. After I say you manage prayers, with about an SMS, I guarantee you. God is good. Am I lying? 
to the home and you believe hallelujah i believe i believe i've received but the moment you live here you'll get a text pesa zangu ziko wapi ushindwe mko kwa maombi mimi nisha tukano hizo by the way and you are impressed on the coin god what happened then quickly what happened you begin to retreat now okay now god god you know you said but it's not working now where are things taking long what 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 what, 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 what are you doing you're moving faith to feelings the devil immediately has to try what the lord has said for you to get to the canon you believe god for you must be resilient on the promises of god faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of god Olive, read for me Acts chapter 14. We'll finish with that. And I want us to pray. We are going to pray a simple prayer. Chapter 14, verse 7. Eh? And, Listen to this. Eh? And they were preaching the gospel there. Mm -hmm. And in Lystra, mm -hmm. a certain man without strength in his feet was, was, crippled, eh? uh -huh. was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, uh -huh. who had never walked. Had never? Walked. They were preaching in a place, there was a guy who was a cripple. Uh -huh. Next. This man had Paul saying, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Seeing he had the faith to be healed. Can you read the amplified version? If you have amplified quickly. I want the amplified version. This is very important for tonight. This is the ministry we are praying for tonight. Amen? Because he sees, see, he sees this now peak now. For the first Saturday of the month. God is good. And we are going to receive from the Lord every single time we come. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. This year we have to believe God for different things. The things we fought about last year at Naziwacha. We need to start fighting for new things. God is good. Amen? Are we together? Listen this, huh? He was listening to Paul as he talked, and Paul gazing intently at him, and observing that he had faith to be healed. Observing he had faith to do what? Ob Paul and Aubiri akatana kona huyu mtu akona imani. Another version says, Paul discerned. Amen? Paul did what? The son. Read the King James now. Not, not, not new. King James. We're going to walk through scriptures. King James. You are there? Good. I like this one. Eh? The same heard Paul speak, mm -hmm. who steadfastly beholding him mm -hmm. and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Perceiving he had faith to be healed. Yanni Paul is preaching and there's a guy in the audience and Paul looks at a guy born from birth a cripple and the guy in his heart is believing god to be healed has the faith to be healed the holy spirit is the one who turns to paul and provokes paul to look at this man and say there is a miracle waiting to happen here someone is believing me for a miracle someone has the faith in this audience for a miracle what does paul do in verse 10 it says say it with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he leaped and walked. He leaped and walked. Can I tell you a biblical truth? There is no time I can stand here and preach. And I tell you that when I came here today to preach, that God told me that James and Kupona, Kabla Tuanzi meeting, Ochari Mbio Kweli. If I'm going to pray in James's house, it's a different story. But when you have gathered here, God can tell me I'm going to move today, I'm going to heal some people. I'll not know who. There are things that God will do here because someone in the audience had the faith for that thing. Someone in the audience had the faith for that thing. And because the person had the faith for that thing, God changes the agenda of the evangelist to fulfill the will of God in the life of that person. Mimi na ubiri kutuzangu ABC, but ile imani James anayo, Holy Ghost ananyambia, James ana imani ya breakthrough. Can you tell him he's getting a breakthrough now? Now I'm telling you, James, you're getting a breakthrough now. Are you seeing how, how it actually works? It is your own faith now that at times provokes God to move. This guy, I believe that Paul had no plan to heal a cripple that day. So people will say that Paul the faith beyond the anointing on the, on the pulpit. Your faith must be bigger than the anointing that is here. Because if I stand here, you'll be limited to what I can do. But if you put your faith on Jesus, you won't be limited to anything. Me, my work will simply to, to, to send the SMS and tell you God has done. That becomes my work. But if you look at the anointing here, unangoja, at Paul amkujia muambia na ono lizaliwa, kama wezi tembea, inaona hivi, tasa anza kutembea. Jamata muambia, ayi, inizaliwa hivi bana. Kuja kwa Can we pray today? 
that we may perceive. We may perceive differently. Can we pray that today? Can we abandon our limitations and not think that God works like us? Can that be our prayer tonight? I want us to worship God with the mind that he is so powerful and let him change our perception of what he can do. Amen? Whatever it is you have come with here today, I want you to have the faith tonight that God can do it tonight. Munanishika, have the faith that God can do it tonight. Namungu siyo mstinji. Don't be afraid to boldly ask. I knew when you were praying with my team in, in the office in, in the evening, um, I saw the Lord put um, a ladder, a golden ladder in the room. That was yesterday. And today when we were worshipping here, I saw the Lord again put the same golden ladder in this room. And, and, and the more we worshipped, the more we were ascending. We were ascending. A ladder is always a wonderful thing. Amen. And so it means that some people are climbing out of situations. Others are being lifted to new levels. New levels of anointing, new levels of fellowship, new levels of prayer. But I saw this yesterday and he repeated it again today. So I'm just more than sure that your life cannot remain the same. Amen. Ata upendi usipendi, your life can't remain the same. Amen. What God has done today is amazing. We continue from here, we push. At the end of the day, you know you want to see his face. Right? We thank him for the blessings, but we want to see his face. That's why we gather here. That's why we continue to worship. Mubarikiwe sana. Kuna chai na riandasi pale inje. Please ensure mbukunya chai na riandasi. God is good? Yes. Tell two people that the Lord has blessed them. Amen? Tell two people God has blessed them while you are drinking. Mubarikiwe. Tell two people. Mubarikiwe. Tell two people. Mubarikiwe. Angalia wala ujambia two people Na ama ujambia two people Yes <laughs> Na wachunguza Wala ujambia two people Yes God has blessed you, amen We continue, every time we come here Have one thing in your heart Believe to encounter God Believe that, okay And as long as we are here Our focus will always be that we encounter God Amen Yes because whenever you encounter God, He doesn't do what you asked Him for only. He does what you didn't ask Him for. Apart from that, thank you so much for the support you give this ministry. It's always a blessing. Thank you so much for what you're doing for us here. You know the prayer we have, I see it last week. Keep on praying for us that the Lord may be able to open for us a door. Amen. But we may be able to move to a new level. Hallelujah. Sawa? Simbarikiwe sana. Na musalmi wale wananijua. Na wale wanijui. Wambie. One Google. So, so, be blessed. See you next week. <laughs>